Welcome back to another video. I've got the B3 three-way live advanced tripod that was sent in via Manfrotto. This came in directly from Italy, so I've put the spec on screen for you just so you can have a look at some of the key features. The B3 range is more of a travel tripod series from what I've seen online. So what I'll do is my usual unboxing and I'll give you a commentary and talk about a few things whilst I'm doing that. The supplied case with this is perfectly decent carry case in the typical Manfrotto colours with the red on the side. You do have a shoulder strap which is sewn into the case and that does have a bit of padding and you've also got an adjuster on there. Quite happy enough with this. The only slightly strange thing is that the single zip which is fine but you only have padding on the black part. The red part of the case you don't actually have any padding on that. You do get a user guide and two star type keys with this and um, also you do have the reflective strips on the bag as well forgot to mention that the tripod itself is pretty compact it is fairly small although it isn't the lightest that i've looked at for this particular type of tripod a travel tripod and we have an auto lock mechanism those silver parts on the side they are actually plastic but um, they do hold firm, they don't actually move until you've actually released tension on that. And on the rest of the tripod as well, it does feel a step up in terms of the build quality from some of the budget ones I've looked at. With this model, they've got a three-way head and it's a fluid drag system. And that's one of the attractions, I suppose, is going to be for people that do stills and video. With the arm on this, the main arm, you can actually unlock that. That does have an adjuster and that just folds out. So the whole design is around saving a bit of space. Spec for the head is on the screen. You can actually get the head just on its own if you wanted to, but um, it does add to the cost of the tripod. It's almost about half the cost of it, and it does add a little bit of weight to it as well. On the upside though, it is pretty compact considering you're getting a three-way video head with this. What also makes this a bit different is because they're going for photographers as well, you can actually flip up the head over to give you a vertical position. You can also do that downwards, but you have to move the handle around a little bit. It does feel quite smooth in use just because it dampens out all the movements, which is basically what you're going to want for video. You do have three bubble levels, although the placement on one of those, I'll get onto that a little bit later on. I'll just show you removing the plate. Now that knob is actually plastic. Yeah, it does have some grooves in it that does provide a decent amount of grip and you can see the machining quality is quite nice on the head. You do have two spring loaded retainers there and they prevent the plate from slipping off if you haven't quite tightened up the uh, head part. And also it's Arca Swiss compatible and I've given you the measurement there. It does open up quite a bit wider up to around about 52 millimeters. The plate that comes with this is standard quarter inch thread and you've got the two rubber strips either side You'll notice the lens direction is also marked on the underside. There's your D-ring so that you don't actually have to put a coin into that. And there is a plastic washer on the underside, so make sure you don't lose that if you take it out. We've got some quite nice rubber on the handles. They've got quite a lot of texturing on them, which means to say that even if it's slightly damp, I have used it outside and it's been raining a bit, and um, you get a very good grip on this. It does feel quite nice to the touch. Rotation part is also dampened and that again has a plastic uh, knob on the end which um, we'll see about this plastic. I mean I don't have a problem with it if it's durable enough and doesn't cause a problem. Same with the collar that sort of has plastic on it too. You do have quite a thick rubber part underneath the head there so it stops it crashing down onto the tripod and one of the larger keys that they give you you can use that for tightening it up. This also features Manfrotto's Easy Link, which is a 3 8 inch thread, so you can put additional accessories directly onto the tripod. Just in case you're wondering, the silver areas, they are actually metal as well. Aluminium like the rest of the body, and the finishing is good, as I would expect. It's not a cheap tripod, it's more of a mid-range price. Instead of the foam that I've seen on a lot of tripods, Manfrotto have gone with this quite thick rubber coating. It's very similar to the feel that you get off the handles just means to say that you can grip the tripod by this if you're moving it around rather than the metal legs where they could slip it just feels much more secure i'm giving you a few different angles and shots now on the tripod they've gone for a sort of flat edge on the inside and it's rounded on the outside 
The rubber feet on this, they are angled and they've got grips on and you can take these out and they're quite tricky to pull out. You really do have to pull them. There is a hole in the top which goes right the way through. So I'm not sure if you can get spikes and put those in. That might be an option. They seem to increase the thickness of the aluminium to compensate for the smaller size at the smallest leg section. They're using lever locks on this tripod. The front part there is plastic, but the underside and the actual clamp part is metal. And there's your other key that you can use to adjust those if you need to. I'm glad they went with the lever locks on this. I just find it much faster and easier to use than the twist locks, though it's down to personal taste. They're either on or off. There's no sort of in-between. It's just faster, I find, when you're using the tripod. No problem using other plates on this at all. I've used different ones that I've got, and it, they fit fine, even though the head design is a little bit different with this. I would prefer if they put a bit more rubber on the plate. It does grip the camera fine. It just seems to be sort of wasted space to me. So I'd rather they put either thicker strips on it or just cover the whole top plate with the rubber. There is one complaint I have about the design is the knob there gets in the way of the battery compartment on most of the cameras that I have. So maybe they could have moved that to a different location or possibly made it a bit smaller. I'll just show you collapsing down the head now and reversing the tripod. You do have a small section that the um, main arm goes into, then you lock it off, then just reverse the legs around and then push the column up. Pretty easy to do, don't have any complaints on that. Done a few shots where I'm panning around, just trying to give you an idea of what you can get with the head, some of the movement, and I think they came out okay. I am not a videographer myself, I'm more into stills photography, but I managed to get some reasonably decent results, even for someone like me. And um, some of these shots with the Fender, that's actually a macro lens, which is probably a bit harder due to the focal length, but I thought it came out okay. And um, main thing is you just have to try and keep a consistent speed. And um, sometimes that can be a little bit tricky, but it's much easier than trying to do this with something like a ball head. You can't adjust the tension on this. It's just a single sort of speed for the fluidity, which seems to be around about medium level setting. In its lowest position, the tripod will actually touch on the ground. Um, it's almost 90 degrees. I think it's 89 point something. So just bear that in mind. Personally, I find that if you don't need to get down that low, you may as well just go up to the next setting and drop the center column down. This does have a rubber bung at the bottom. I probably would have gone with a hook, to be honest with you, for stability, but uh, that's the design that they picked, very similar to the feet that we had. Just pull out and then reverse it around. You can see the shape they've gone for a sort of rounded triangle shape on this with the center column. And then just turn it around and you can adjust the height as you want with this and then lock it off. As the center column isn't as tall as some of the tripods that I've tried, you probably won't need to do that very often. It's a little bit shorter than some of the recent ones that I've looked at, but I thought I'd show it to you just so you could see. As you would expect, the head can be removed, so I'll unscrew that. That is a standard 3 8 thread on that, so pretty much any head that you've got will fit onto the legs. I was a bit concerned about the stability with the thinner legs, but they did seem to be quite rigid, possibly due to the increased thickness of the aluminium. As far as size goes, it's one of the smaller ones that I've looked at, not the smallest. So do remember, you're probably going to have to extend out that center column if you're doing eye level shooting. And I've given you a measurement there, roughly give you an idea what sort of height you'll be looking at. One of the bubble levels is pretty hard to see, though, if, unless you're directly above it or in the front. I would have preferred if you could actually see that from behind. It's quite an interesting tripod, particularly if you're doing quite a lot of video. There's no real advantage to having a fluid head system if you're mainly into stills photography. So they're obviously going for your hybrid shooter or someone that's doing a lot of video. If you've got any questions or thoughts on this particular tripod, do leave a comment below. And hopefully you found that video useful. Thanks very much for watching.